Hello, welcome to the Paige Campbell Show. I'm sitting here with um, a very special guest, international best-selling author of the two books, Doubleheader, My Life with Two Penises, and Double Stuff, Steamy Tales from My Love Life with Two Penises, the diphallic dude. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing all right. Um, is, is, that, is that what you want me to call you, the diphallic you, dude? You can call me Clark. That's okay, Clark. That's Okay, cool. I couldn't find um, a name. I just, all your books have Diphallic Dude, so. Yeah, it's either been Double Dick Dude, Triple D, or Clark, but I usually go by Clark just because it makes it a lot easier for some of the, uh, when I've done radio, they're like, we can't call you Double Dick Dude. <laughs> just, just call me Clark then. Okay, Clark's fine, but podcasts are the Wild West. It's Double That's Dick, true. Double Dick Dude yeah. is fine with me. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I mean, I don't want to be too, I guess... You can, you can say whatever you want to say. I've heard it all. Okay. Uh, I mean, what's it like having two dicks? Like, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a question I've gotten a lot. And unfortunately, the answer is probably not as, as exciting as everyone expects. It's really difficult for me to tell you what it's like having two, because it'd be like me asking you, what's it like to have two hands? Yeah, feet? right. Um... It's, let's put it this way, it makes wearing shorts difficult, it makes fitting into underwear or jock straps difficult at times, uh, it makes swim trunks difficult, uh, you know, it, it's it's not that I'm complaining about having to, I mean, I, I, I don't know life without them, if I woke up tomorrow and there was only one, I'd be freaked out, um, but uh, it's more, not to sound corny, but it's more than a handful, it really takes a lot of effort. <laughs> to deal with certain things right gotcha um when did you um since you've always known that when did you know that was a unique thing um like did you think that everyone had to when you were a child and then found out that that wasn't the case or no well see my parents you know, they did it so early that i don't remember exactly when they told me okay it, it's just been like it was a part of my my mindset in my life as far back as i can remember i always knew that i was special i was unique and my parents had said to me you know not everyone has two not all the boys have two most boys if not all the other boys you'll ever be will only have one so don't talk about them don't, okay don't tell people don't show them because you don't want to make them feel bad that they've only got one okay so it was, it was more of a you know you're really cool and you're really special so you should be really nice and kind and considerate and not make other people feel bad about only having one. And that, that worked. That worked for a long time until I, I told my mom after the fact, long after the fact, I said, if you had warned me that when I got older, there would be people who it wouldn't hurt their feelings. They would be either obsessed with it or they would be grossed out by it or they would envy it maybe it would have helped me handle situations a little bit differently once I hit like 15, 16, 17 years old because you know after a certain while your mindset of oh I'm special and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings doesn't work anymore right right <laughs> um, so uh, you said you're, uh, you're bisexual on your right. uh, profile I was just looking at your Twitter and things right. um is that, do you prefer one or the other, men or women, or is it just... It, it really just, you know, it's, it's very fluid. It's not a, a finite... I, I don't sit there and specifically focus on, okay, today I'm going to be attracted to men, or tomorrow I'm going to think about women. It really has a lot to do with, I guess you could say individuality, the person. You know, like, I don't hook up with people off from the internet. Okay. I, I, I've hooked up with people that have heard about me from the internet, but I've never actually met a person to have sex with that uh, followed me on the internet. The only person I've actually ever met that discovered me and specifically connected with me was my lawyer. And okay. of course, you know, that's all strictly professional, unfortunately, because she's extremely sexy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Now she's in my, if you look in the people I'm following on Twitter, her name's Jackie. She looks like Rogue from the X-Men because she's got like a natural, like a uh, streak in her hair. Oh, nice. And uh, 
she's really awesome. But no, beyond that, I've never met anyone to hook up with them. So for me, if I'm out somewhere, if I go to a bar or if I'm at a party or if I'm at some sort of event and I find myself talking to someone that I find really attractive and it just happens to be a guy or just happens to be a girl, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, as long as, as long as a person is reciprocating the attraction, I mean, I can tell when someone's not interested. Okay. So, so if I meet a dude and he's like really flirty and chatty with me and it seems like there might be something, then hey, you know, maybe I'll be game for seeing what happens. If I, same thing with a girl. I don't make a decision. It just happens with the individual. Okay. So um, when you are interested or they're interested, um, when do you let them know that you have uh, two penises instead of one? <laughs> uh, well, really, it's, it's, you know, I said this in my Reddit AMA back in 2014. Okay. People asked, you know, how, how open are you about it? I, I don't discuss it generally. Um, I guess you could say in real life. Uh, the, my presence on the internet is focused entirely on my condition having two penises but away from the internet in real life only a small group of people very very close friends my buddy from high school and then of course family members they're the only ones who know my attorney knows obviously okay but when when i'm when i'm out places i don't talk about them i don't even acknowledge it i mean i've been around people who were talking about me and didn't even know they were standing next to me oh wow (laughs) when i yeah when i meet someone and there's an attraction and I think that it might be, uh, you know, I think anyone can tell you that you can always tell when the attraction is purely physical and pretty much uh, a hookup in the moment type thing. Or if you think that you like them more than that, and it might be, you know, I want to go on multiple dates with them. So in the situation where I might be deciding to hook up, it depends on you know, the moment, the time, the timing of it all. And if I'm going to hook up with the person, usually I, depending on how they are acting towards me and how they're reacting to stuff, I'll try to find ways to bring up conversations and, and see how they, you know, how they react to uh, peculiar things or okay. out of the ordinary stuff. And if they're game with it, then I'll be like, so, you know, I'll wait until we're in, getting ready to be in that moment. I'll be like, you know, I, I should, I should tell you before we go any further that, I'm different than probably any guy you've ever met or ever will meet. Right. And they're like, well, usually, usually the girls think, oh, they go, oh, what, you're, you're uncircumcised. Because that's generally the trick, the, the, the trick or the mind trick that they think that, that that's what it's going to be. And it's like, well, yes, I am, but it's more than that. And then, and sometimes I've told them, well, I have two. And they're like, no, you, what? you have two what? And I have to show them. And then other times I've been like, well, here they are. Right. And the, the girls usually, I mean, I would say if you were to take all the girls I've been with and lump them into 10 women, okay, uh, maybe five have been really cool with it from the start. Okay. Uh, maybe two of them were freaked out at first, but then warmed up to it. And then, you know, the, yeah, the other three were like, forget it. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Because here's the thing. One of the things that... There are a lot of a lot of, a lot of guys who are hung with big, you know, big packages. Will tell you that if they're honest, they'll tell you that a lot of women will tell them you're not putting that in here. It's too big. Right, right. Or if you do, you're not putting all of it in here. That's way too big. Mm-hmm. So I'm not only suffering from or not suffering, faced with the aspect of going, hey, by the way, not only am I uncut, I'm uncut twice, and they're huge. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, and so the funny thing is, I get more acceptance and positive reactions from guys. I mean, even guys who consider themselves straight. Yeah. I've got even more positive experiences with supposed straight guys or identifying straight guys than with a lot of women. Oh, wow. Okay. So, do you have any, like, crazy story about revealing it and uh, they, like, totally freaked out? Like, is there a crazy story um, where they, like, did something pretty irrational over it? I had one girl, uh, I, I, I mentioned this once last year, I had one girl, I showed them to her, we were in an intimate situation, and she thought, she's like, that's fake. <laughs> she, she thought I had a fake one, like, on me. Yeah. 
I, I guess she thought I glued one. I don't know how that would work. <laughs> yeah, like maybe but a... Because I didn't have underwear on. I was literally naked from the waist down, so it wasn't like I could have been hiding a strap harness or something. It was... Anyway, right. she said, that's fake. <laughs> and I laughed and went, no, it's not. And she grabbed it, the, the, uh, the left one, and went to pull on it. Yeah. And when she realized it, <laughs> it wasn't pulling off... Right. <laughs> She, she freaked out, <laughs> uh, started laughing hysterically, screamed, and then started laughing hysterically, and then just, uh, a lot of, I've had a lot of girls literally jump up and run, either to the other side of the room, or out of the room. Right. So, I mean, it's, I don't know, I guess, it, it's, I just, since I don't know life any other way, it, I, I It'd be kind of like someone freaking out that you had ten fingers. Like, you have ten, you should only have six. Right, right. It's, it's, it's like, okay, it's not like they're ugly or anything. Right. Um, how, um, do you know if this is unique to you, or have you ever met anyone that has this same condition? I've never met anyone who has it. Okay. Um, I've seen pictures uh, on the internet. I've never, you know, I've never met anyone, I've never seen any real footage of anyone who has diphalia, any guy is that is um <clears throat> the the odds are very rare i think it's like it's like one in five million or 500 million it's 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 very i mean the one of the last reported cases was like way or the first reported cases was back in the 1600s oh the okay is, is the, the condition that i have generally is a pretty gruesome condition it's, right it's it has to do with the development of and in, in, in development in utero, okay, with, with um, cells splitting and dividing, and the midline portion of the body not forming properly, and sometimes there'll be two penises, but one will be misshapen and non-functional. Maybe there'll be two, and they both won't work, or uh, intestines coming out the front of the stomach, uh, oh. spina bifida, all kinds of really gruesome stuff. A lot of a lot of kids, a lot of boys that are born with it from what I've read, uh, either don't survive because the complications are so terrible or they end up not having really working uh, equipment. Okay. Okay. So that's what makes yours unique is they're both functional. Yeah, they're both functional. They're both big. They both work. And, uh, you know, they don't look like, it's not like I've got like one growing off the side of one. It's like two, two big ones. Okay. Okay. So, um, what are you doing when you have sex? Because they're, I've seen the picture, like they're right next to each other. So how are you managing that? Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's another question that I get a lot. People, you know, there's been a lot of uh, porn in the, like, I guess from the stuff I've seen on the internet, it looks like it was maybe recorded in like the eighties or nineties. Okay. And a lot of the porn that I've seen, it's, I think it's advertised as fake because it definitely looks fake. Okay. But they stack them. They put the penises one Ooh. above the other. Okay. And since mine are side by side, everyone goes, well, how can you put them in anyone if they're side by side? And it's like, well, if it's a girl, um, you can, well, if it's anyone really, you can roll them on their side and then you, you know, enter in being straight up and down. So side by side, you know, left one goes in the front. Okay. It goes back, or maybe they both go in the front, or maybe they both go in the back. It's it's not as difficult as I guess it may seem. I okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, do you have one that you prefer, or <laughs> is it pretty much just the same? Well, I did in in the past. I had I preferred the right one. Okay. Um, I I had surgery back uh, in twenty fourteen or yeah twenty. I get so mixed up. It was either 2014 or 2015. Okay. Actually, it was 2014 because it was not too long after I, I had come out publicly, and I ended up breaking up with my boyfriend and girlfriend not too long after that. I had had – see, inside my body, the shaft is mostly one. Okay. But as it gets closer to – I don't know if how much the average guy knows about anatomy, but the shaft goes way back between your legs and all the way up. On the, on the inside next to the inside of your ass okay so and then it hits your prostate and then it goes to the bladder well my prostate's really huge okay and my shaft comes out of it as one but soon splits into two like not much of it there's not much before it turns into two and where my urethra forks 
one off to the right, one off to the left, from one tube, there was a kink in the left side that had, there was like a little pinch. And I, there had been a problem with it back when I was younger. And they had done a little bit of a little surgery thing and put a little thing in there that had fixed it. <clears throat> because when I was going to the bathroom, it wasn't being able to flow through the left one as easily. And it would take pressure like uh, ballooning or filling up and before it would come out, mm-hmm. which is which also made sex a little difficult because when I'd orgasm, it was come out of both, but it would come out of the right one more than the left one because of the little pinch. Well, when I, in 2014, when I had the surgery, they went in and uh, had to do a CAT scan and look at everything because if you look at the older photos that were first posted way back when I first went public, okay. they looked like they were in a, like a V formation, like the letter V. They looked like they both came out of one spot and one went left and one went right. Okay. But actually what it was is because when I went through puberty, the way my body developed, your, your penis is actually attached to your pelvic bone by a suspensory ligament, which is what makes your, your dick stand up when you get hard. Okay. Well, when my suspensory ligament and my, my penis is like, uh, I guess we're a development the inside my body that the shaft and then the two shafts grew in a way where it caused like slack inside my body, which was causing the kink in my urethra. And the doctors were worried that the massive blood veins that were underneath the skin, just bl- just inside my body beneath uh, my two, my two dicks, they were afraid that they were fused together. And they said, listen, if they're fused, we can't separate them or reposition them without potentially damaging blood vessels and all this other nasty stuff that you okay. don't want to happen. But they did the CT scan and they found that the blood veins were not tangled up. They were not fused together. They're just kind of like overlapped one another. So what they did is they went in and they opened up um, my body right between them and right above them. And they went in and completely uh, separated. They, it's, it's called suspensory ligament detachment. It's, it's usually used for guys who want to gain like maybe half an inch in length. Okay. The, the thing is, is when you have suspensory ligament detachment even though you'll get hard it doesn't stand up anymore but oh, okay. it's what holds it against the pelvic bone and makes it stand when it gets hard so they disconnected that and all the slack inside my body which was about mm, i think it was like an inch and a half, almost two inches of slack on my shafts actually was allowed to extend out where it should have been normally and then they put a spacer silicone pad and a spacer to keep the suspensory ligament from reattaching because if if the shafts get pressed up against it for too long, it's kind of like any kind of cut or wound on your body. If the skin gets pressed together long enough, it'll it'll adhere to itself. Okay. So they put all that in there and they stitched everything back up and and after it healed, uh, both see originally my right dick was bigger, looked bigger. Okay. Than my left one. So after the surgery, they were both equal. You okay. Know, originally soft, the right one was, you know, maybe four and a half, five inches soft. The, the left one was like three, four inches soft and hard. The, the right one was right around seven. And the left one was more like five and a half, six, six and a half. And the left one never really quite got hard as the right one. So I preferred the right one. This is the long way around to answering your question. Did I have a favorite? Yeah, the right <laughs> one was my favorite because of the, the issue going on inside. But since the surgery, now both equally long they're both about eight inches give or take a little bit um soft okay and when i'm hard they're both 10 inches or maybe a little bit more the only difference is is now they don't stand up when i get hard they actually kind of hang outward and point down but they're hard which is actually good because i had someone say to me don't you are you upset that your your dicks don't stand up anymore when you get hard (laughs) right no actually i love that they don't because uh, i'm sure any any you know you can say you, you would probably say that sometimes getting a, a boner in your pants can hurt. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If it's being forced down by your pants. Yeah. Yeah. So since mine aren't being forced down anymore, it doesn't hurt. To get okay. Or, or too hard or whatever. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. So uh, yes, no, I don't have favorite anymore. Okay. It used to be the right. Now it's both. <laughs> so you, so were you saying before the surgery that like if one was stimulated, they would both come? Is that basically what you were saying? my body that forks into two okay regardless of whether or not i you know peeing or coming the fluid comes out of both oh okay okay which is which is you know how i said it it could be when you ask what it's like to have two and i said it can make things difficult twice as difficult well the thing is this 
before my surgery, I could go to a wall urinal in a public bathroom. Yeah. And if I hugged the ear really close, I could pee and no one would notice. But I'd have to take both of them out because it comes out of both. Ah, uh, well, okay. After the surgery, it's not very easy to tug an eight-inch dick and then another eight-inch dick out of your pants <laughs> and pee at a urinal without someone glancing over and going, what the... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So, so um, they don't have to be simulated separately to come... Like, like one won't come and the other won't, is what you're saying. Right, right. No, no matter if, – if you're – if someone is sucking on the right one or jerking on the left one and, and, and they go long enough and I, and I come, it'll come out of both. But here's the best part about it. If – let's say they're, they're going on the right one and yeah. they're working the right one and then I come. Every guy that I know has a refractory period where they'll go soft and they can't get hard again for a period of time before they can come again. Okay. With me – if you swap over to the other one, let's say, like I just said, you were on the right one and you got it done, and then you went to the left one, and you could go again and keep going, and I would come again. And oh, you could nice. Swap back to the right one, and I would come <laughs> again. You could swap back to the left one. I've I've swapped back and forth on them. Um, I used to swap back and forth with my hands back when they were smaller, but ever since they've been long as long as they are now, I actually able to self suck them. Okay. So I swap back and forth between them and go for three, some three, four hours sometimes. Okay, so that's like when you do stimulate both of them when you masturbate. I usually, I mean, I prefer to. Okay, yeah, I was just just grab a hold of one, but usually I, I I get I use both of them. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. I like it. Um, you you were talking about uh porn. Um, right. is that something you've ever considered doing? I for a hiccup back in my late teens when I was like eighteen, nineteen, it crossed my mind. Briefly, ever okay. so briefly, and then it, I just I don't know I don't know why I decided not to. Then okay, uh, I had offers from people who were they hadn't seen my equipment. They had just heard from someone that you know one of their friends who knew me, or you know the old I know someone who knows someone who has two dicks type thing. Right, and uh, they were like, you know, if you really do, if you really do have two dicks, then you know you you could do really well in porn. And I was just like, I thought about it, and then I was like, no. And then after I came out and did the Reddit thing, I got a ton of offers. Yeah, I'm sure. A lot of different studios. Vivid Entertainment apparently offered me a million dollars to do a video. And I was just like, no. I mean, here's the thing. People ask, "Why, why why wouldn't I do it? And the answer is honestly because one, one, one incentive that I can imagine would be a reason to do porn is because the money can be really good right if you don't need money then that incentive has gone i mean i i i live very comfortably and very happily and and i will never i would never have to work at a job unless i wanted to okay of my financial situation so it's there's no way anyone could go we'll give you two million dollars to do a video and be like mm, i don't need it Thank right you, <laughs> and then the other thing is is it's just i mean i don't slight anyone for doing porn if you want to get on video and do people or whatever you want to do that's that's fine that's cool hell i'll watch i don't mind but i don't want to do it okay yeah that makes sense um you don't have to answer this one if you don't want but uh do you have like what's your craziest sex story um just there's it's not that i wouldn't know i have no problem answering okay i just don't know you can just pick one of the good ones it doesn't have to be by far the craziest Yeah. And, uh, my mind says is it seemed kind of not that crazy to me. Right. It apparently, it blew a lot of people's minds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like I guess my my uh, idea of normal is other people's ideas of insane. So I try to imagine what my idea of crazy would be would probably be absolutely mind-blowing to everyone else um no i mean i think some of the the funnier the funnier the more enjoyable stories okay uh, sure yeah is you know uh those moments where i go into a situation thinking that i'm going to be hooking up with the chick yeah and i end up hooking up with her boyfriend instead (laughs) and to the point where i mean like in front of her 
Right. And I've actually I was I was at a party uh, one time. And it wasn't it was it was since I went pub on Reddit, and I was at a party, and there was it wasn't a huge party. I think it was probably like maybe 15, 10, 15 people there, um, and everyone had been drinking and and acting like idiots. And there was uh, a bunch of guys, a bunch of girls. Some were couples, some were not. Some came alone. I was there with a friend. And my friend knew it wasn't my friend that I've known since high school, but it was another friend who knows, you know, what I've got going on. Okay. And when we were going to the thing, he was like, "Do you think you're going to end up uh, taking him out?" I'm like, "I don't know. It just depends on what happens." And he was like, "Oh, if you do, I want to be. I want to see what people do." And I'm <laughs> like, "Yeah, I know. You love watching people react." He's like, "Oh, it's the best." <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's like imagine unveiling a, a unicorn in the middle of a living room. But, right. <laughs> so anyway, I'm. I'm I was in this in this uh, like game room pool table room of this house. It was not my place, which is rare that I did anything because I've been very paranoid about people having home camera systems set up and someone catching video of me. And the next thing you know, everyone knows what I look like. But uh, right, I, I decided to fool around. Yeah, well, I ended up fooling around. I I just told someone else about this recently. I was in the game room area, and there was these two guys who had been. Bet, uh, two guys and they had girlfriends and they had been betting about everything. They had been placing bets on this and placing bets <laughs> on that, and daring people to do this and daring people to do that, and they kept winning everything. And I was just sitting there thinking, these guys are. It wasn't so much the money that I was jealous of. I was just jealous of the fact that these guys were showing everyone up, like you know, arm wrestling and then uh, beer pong stuff, and it was like they were really arrogant, and so. I was like, you know, you guys are acting like you're big stuff. And I think it's kind of funny because usually guys who act all cocky and arrogant have little dicks. Right. And they were like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and I was like, no, seriously. I bet my dicks are bigger than your two. <laughs> and they didn't mean thick dicks. I, I, I wondered if they were going to notice if they didn't hear the plural on it. <laughs> and they were like, please. They, they just started... They started kind of like, you know, trying to avoid, they were just like, yeah, whatever, whatever. I was like, no, I'll bet money on it. <laughs> and they were like, no, we'll bet money on it. And I was like, no, you, you can't afford to pay me when I win. <laughs> and they were just like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean we can't afford to pay you? I was like, because I've got more money than you <laughs> and I'm going to win. And they're like, oh yeah, you, you think you're something tough? And I was like, oh yeah, I guarantee you that I got more going on between my legs than both of you. <laughs> And at this point, my buddy walked into the room and saw what was happening and was like, oh, he like clapped his hands and rubbed him and sat down like, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> and so they were just like, all right, fine, fine. And so uh, they, they were wearing just jeans and unbuttoned and pulled their jeans down and already had hard-ons, which kind of caught me off guard. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> it's like apparently you really interested in this so anyway they're you know i guess maybe seven seven inches eight inches long i mean it, they weren't under impressive it was like okay cool you know those aren't bad dicks it wasn't like baby dick or anything right right and i was like all right well i went <laughs> they're like well you have to prove it and their girlfriends are like oh my god you guys this is this is so gay <laughs> and i'm sitting there going yeah well you know hey and they were like no come on man you gotta and I was like, all right, all right, listen, if I prove you wrong, I'm not going to collect money. You guys have to blow me. <laughs> and they were like, bullshit. And I was like, oh, yeah, I bet I've got twice as much as both of you. <laughs> and they both sat there for like a split second and kind of looked at each other with this like, what? Like, they didn't understand what I was like. The math wasn't computing in their head. <laughs> and one of the girlfriends was like, okay, I, I'm, I'm not drunk enough for this. And she walked out of the room. And the other girlfriend was standing there and was like, I don't know, this is kind of cool. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, we got a kinky one over here. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, fine, but you guys have to blow me when it's, because I'm going to win. Okay. And they were like, yeah, we'll see. We'll see about that. <laughs> and so I unbuttoned my pants and I pulled them down. And they just like, what? Uh, uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and they were just staring. Like, completely caught off guard. And I was like, yeah, now, get to it. <laughs> and the one on the left was like, well, how do you 
know you want. I was like, I'm already bigger than you and I'm soft. <laughs> right. And he was like, fuck, what is that? It's like, is that, is, that, is that like eight inches? I was like, soft, yes. And then he looked at his buddy and his buddy was like, I don't know, man, that's crazy. <laughs> and then the girl that with him was like, that'd be really hot to see you two do that. And I was like, thank you. That's what I was thinking to myself. <laughs> and so they were just like, I was like, well, hey, listen, if you don't do this, then everyone is going to know that you guys are not good for your word, that, you know, your word just means nothing. <laughs> and they were just like, ah, ah. And now I, I must I must confirm or clarify, they were very drunk at this point. They had been drinking beer and all kinds of stuff. I mean, they were kind of swaying while they were standing there. And I right. was like, now, listen, you guys, you've been drinking a lot, so you don't, if you don't, if you want to go ahead and chicken out and just, and they were like, no, no chicken. <laughs> and so the next thing I know, they're both like, are like, well, sit down or something. And I was like, no, you two both kneel. <laughs> and they're just like, oh. and so they kneel. And the next thing I know, you know, they're both like trying to figure out who's going to do what. And then they just start blowing me and everyone starts laughing and was like going, you know, awesome. And the girl that was still there is like, this is really crazy but it's like really hot <laughs> and they start going at it and th then they're like wait a minute well you you should do this one and i'll do this one and they were just like okay i don't care who does what you swap back and forth all, i just keep going until i'm done <laughs> and so they're going at it and then i'm just like all right here you go guys uh you get ready because I'm, I'm about to blow my load <laughs> and they were like what and what one was like, what? And the other one was still going. And I did it was funny. The one on the left was stroking off while he was doing it. <laughs> and so I was just like, he's into this. <laughs> and the one on the right was still hard, but he wasn't doing anything really. And so I'm just like, okay, yeah, you need to put your mouth back on it. And he started, and then I came, and I came so much that they both started coughing and it ran out of their noses. <laughs> oh my gosh. And they pull back, and it's like hitting them in the face and the hair right the moment that the other girl who left comes back in is like oh my god and she turns around and leaves and her friend's like this is hot and my buddy's like dude you totally glazed him <laughs> and he's just like he's like they look like two freaking donuts <laughs> and they're just, just like kneeling there at this point kind of like coughing and like wiping their mouths and like wiping their faces and looking at each other and i was like all right thanks guys <laughs> put them back in my pants and walked out of the room with my friend and as I'm walking out of the room the girl who ran out of the room was on her phone going I'm not staying here I did not know he was into that stuff and <laughs> I was like yeah I know no the guy has two of them it was just <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah it was really great I mean it was fun it's always I always love those situations when I'm caught off guard by what people will do right well, that was a great story. Uh, thank you for doing this, Clark. Um, I, I really appreciate this. Um, last question, I guess. Uh, what's What's next? You've written the two books. Do you have anything else planned? Yeah, actually, in development right now is uh, what it should turn out to be, uh, at least be one, maybe more, depending on how popular. But there's going to be a Double Dick Dude comic book. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it'll be the uh, adventures. I don't know if it's gonna be called the Adventures of Double Dick Dude, but uh, it's gonna be a, it's it's gonna be a comic book that's got like I think anywhere between two and four short stories that are gonna be fully illustrated uh, about you know based upon true events. Okay. Uh, you know, it's, it's true with me. The truth is stranger than fiction. It's better than fiction. Otherwise, it can get you know. If you the, the the thought at first was maybe making me into a superhero, but then we thought, no, nah, let's just stick to reality because if you start getting too fictional, then people will start to wonder, you know, the legitimacy of certain things. Well, did that really happen? And no, so we just decided to stick with, you know, the real the real stuff. And uh, right now, it's going through uh, um, the contracts are being worked on and put together, and then um, we're hoping. Hoping to ha I'm hoping to have something done by the fall because this stuff takes – it doesn't happen as quickly as people think it would. Right, right. Um, so. Do you have any idea when that will be released or can you I'm not hoping, say? I'm hoping the fall. I'm hoping fall. Okay. Maybe October, November, um, fall, late fall because, uh, you know, the, it, you, I have to go through a process where, you know, I submit – 
the storyline and the dialogue stuff, and then the artists have to sit down and they have to plot out the visuals, then they have to do preliminary of the visuals, and then I have to, you know, make sure, hey, you drawing my dicks right, are you drawing my ass right, are you right, drawing right. all this to my body the right way, and if they are, then it's like, okay, well, you know, it's literally a back and forth type thing of whether or not this works, that works, that doesn't work, let's go with this, let's go with that, and then once it's done, it's, it's going to be, a, from my understanding, it's going to be a digital, and it'll be available in print and i think it'll be available in print on demand or a limited edition set and if it does really well then there may be a follow-up series after that nice so i'm excited i would think it'd be cool to be an actual a comic book character yeah that's really exciting definitely um well thank you again man i really appreciate it um no, no problem. It's, it's actually been it's been fun everyone i've talked to is you said you were 19 everyone i've talked to has been like Oh, uh, late thirties, early forties, and up. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's nice talking to someone who's closer to my age. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone. Follow him on Twitter. He's at Diphalic Dude. Um, thanks for doing it, man. It was a pleasure. Thanks so much, Paige. Take care. You too.